Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seamland and today we talk about the top three foods that I eat basically every day. So these are the foods that are part of my regular diet almost all the time. And um, yeah, I do like them and I will also explain why besides, you know, the um, taste component, uh, what is the like nutritional reason why I consume them. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So number one is going to be eggs. Um, I've been eating um, quite a lot of eggs regularly for you know, almost 10 years. Uh, and um, the reason for that is that, you know, they're one of the highest quality proteins. They're mo most, uh, one of the most bioavailable forms of protein. They have all the essential amino acids. They're satiating and they taste pretty good. And you can use them in many different ways. Like you can use them as you fry the egg, you boil the egg, you scramble the egg, you make an omelet out of it, you make a pancake out of it. You can add it on top of vegetables and make like a pie or a casserole. Um, yeah, there's like almost endless <laughs> options you can use the egg with some interesting studies find that uh, when you eat eggs, then uh, they do promote more satiety than like, you know, other foods and people who eat eggs, you know, let's say for breakfast, then they would um, end up eating a bit less calories later the day as well because of the higher satiety effect of uh, the eggs. So uh, they're good for weight loss as well. Um, yeah, it's hard to, let's say, overeat eggs, like you get sick of them eventually, um, especially, yeah, like if you eat like, you know, I don't know, six or 10 eggs, then I think you probably will get sick uh, eventually and you, you want to stop eating that. So they are a good way to control your weight as well. They're high in protein, which helps with the satiety. Um, but um, yeah, they're just, you know, kind of convenient. Like you don't really need a lot of time to cook them. They're easy to make and uh, yeah, they taste good. Excellent. Number two is going to be a cottage cheese. So cottage cheese is also that I've been eating regularly almost 10 years, something like that. And uh, yeah, this uh, obviously is dairy. Some people are allergic to dairy. I'm not, I react very good to dairy. Like I can eat all the dairy I want. Uh, and uh, cottage cheese is one of the best forms of dairy. I think one of the healthiest forms because it's uh, super high in protein. It, it tastes good. Um, what the studies actually find with uh, calcium and dairy is that uh, people who do eat more uh, calcium and uh, dairy then uh, they tend to be a bit leaner, they tend to have more muscle, and uh, yeah, just, you know, helps uh, with that for different reasons. Calcium is a good way to bind, or calcium will bind to, let's say, fats uh, when you digest them, and uh, that is going to be good for, you know, preventing uh, maybe like post two uh, high post bandwidth rises in triglycerides, or like if you're trying to lose weight, then that will also help you to create a calorie deficit by binding to some of the the fats that you uh, would eat. So yeah, I like cottage cheese. I prefer preferably eat it as like a dessert. Uh, I don't really include it into like my main course, but um, I'll have it as a dessert with some berries, some cinnamon, maybe a little bit of fruit. Um, yeah, those kind of things. It's a very good, let's say, alternative to cereal. You just, you know, take some pumpkin seeds and nuts and berries and coconut flakes, whatever, mix it together with the cottage cheese. You're going to get uh, some nice low carb keto cereal. And uh, yeah, it's uh, high protein as well. Before bed, it has, you know, casein. It's going to be good for slowing down the, or casein is going to be slow, more slowly absorbed over the night. So you're going to stay more anabolic for longer and uh, not, um, let's say, uh, lose muscle, especially if you're doing like, a little bit of fasting and those kind of things where your first meal isn't going to be immediately after you wake up. Cottage cheese! Number three is uh, cauliflower. So uh, cauliflower is um, one of my favorite vegetables. It's uh, again super versatile. It tastes great. It's uh, easy to make and uh, yeah, very convenient uh, vegetable. Uh, cauliflower obviously has fiber. It's low carb it has a, like you know out of all the vegetables it's still higher in protein than like potatoes or carrots or whatever uh, but it's still less in calories so it's very good as a way to fill yourself up and uh, become more satiated from less calories it's also very good to let's say you know make things like cauliflower rice cauliflower pizza crust 
uh, mashed uh, cauliflower, those kind of things to replace other higher carb foods. Like you can replace uh, the pizza crust with entirely this uh, cauliflower and you can add eggs there, some tomato sauce, uh, cheese on top. And it's, you know, as, as good as the regular pizza, but significantly lower in calories and uh, much healthier for you. Uh, and likewise with uh, cauliflower rice, for example, you're going to get much less carbs uh, on, on some cases. Cauliflower is also uh, contains, uh, obviously, uh, these uh, precursors that help to uh, promote sulforaphane, that helps to increase glutathione levels, and um, also has DIM, which is good for estrogen balance. So, um, yeah, it binds to estrogen, and uh, that's going to be good for males, especially, maybe not so ideal for women all the time, uh, but uh, for men, at least, it's definitely going to be um, pretty damn good. Cauliflower is the kind of, I think, the safest uh, cruciferous vegetable there is. Uh, like, I wouldn't eat uh, broccoli when it's raw because the goitrogens and um, fiber may uh, be harmful for the thyroid if you eat like too much raw broccoli or too much raw uh, cabbage. But uh, with, with a cauliflower, like, I wouldn't, yeah, like eat raw cauliflower all the time either. But even, like, I think it's kind of the safest in terms of all the other cruciferous vegetables for that. So I would eat, I would still be fine eating like a little bit of raw cauliflower. I don't get any uh, negative side effects from that. Um, but I wouldn't do it like all the time. You would still want to cook all the cruciferous vegetables, like either boil them, boil them, um, cook them in the oven, uh, roast them, or make them into like a like a like a puree or something like that. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized. Stay empowered.